Hey everybody, Jamie here with the Enigmatic Nomadics YouTube channel. I am in uh, Flagstaff, still up enjoying the nice weather. And I want to put this video out because I've got uh, a solar system that isn't quite keeping up with uh, my needs in the bus. And I've got another panel that I've had for a little while that I've just been warehousing and I'm gonna install it and add it to the, uh, to the side that needs it. I've got a solar system on the driver's side that runs almost everything and then a solar system on the passenger side that runs my freezer and some lights. And I just have one panel on it. It's a 100 watt Renogy. And it's just the way I'm situated with the trees. I get shade on it early in the day. It's only 100 watts putting out five amps and it just isn't keeping up. So I wanted to do this video and talk about is it safe to mix and match panels and what, what are some of the things that you need to take into consideration when you're doing that. So I'm gonna install it, show you the installation, and we're gonna talk about why I'm able to install it in this situation and how in some cases I wouldn't be able to install it or I wouldn't be able to get the maximum benefit out of it if, uh, if it's a different voltage and things like that. But we'll get into it in the video, so let's get started. The first thing that I care about when I'm going to install this system is am I putting a panel on that the solar controller can handle and what panels do I already have up there. Now one of the things to take into consideration is that solar panels may come with a 30 year warranty but they're not going to put out the same voltages and amperage over that time. They degrade over time and so what I've got on my roof now is a mix and match set of solar panels because I started small with a couple of uh, 200 and f or 140 watt Kyoceras for a total of 280 watts on my van and when I sold my van I put those on the bus and bought some Renogy 100 watts and then I got some other panels along the way that were used and just added them as well. Now solar panels come in different voltages and different amperage outputs. What we care about with the amperage output is that we're not adding up the amps so high that our wires that we're using can't handle it because then we're gonna have melted wires, we're gonna have problems. So we don't ever really wanna wire these things up over 30 amps additive over the panels in um, series, or pardon me, parallel. Parallel is additive amps, uh, series is additive volts. So we wanna make sure on the driver's side, I'm right at the max of 30 amps on those wires. And I don't wanna add any more to that because I'm using 10 gauge uh, solar panel wires and they're rated to a maximum of 30 amps. On my passenger side, I've got 12 gauge wires, so it's a little bit less, but I'm only gonna have two panels, so a maximum of 10 amps. So I'm gonna be fine on that. I also wanna make sure that my voltages are the same. And what I mean by that is these panels can look the same when you look at them, but the voltages could be, you know, we were selling 36 volt panels from Northern Arizona Wind and Sun at the van build. And let's just, and they put out 9.6 amps. Let's just say that I have a 36 volt panel I wanna put onto my existing system. I'd probably be better off just disconnecting that 100 amp panel and just running the 36 volts. Now I know that my Victron solar controller can handle 36 volts. It's rated right there on the uh, front of the unit, what it's uh, capable of. And if I tied that 36 volt in to a 12 volt panel, which is really about 20 volts in uh, practice when you put your voltmeter on it, I'm only gonna get 20 volts maximum out of that 36 volt panel. So I paid for something I'm not even using thoroughly. So in this case, all my panels, or 12 volt. This panel here is 12 volt. It says right on here, VOC 21.5 volts. That is uh, the voltage that it would put out if it didn't have any resistance at all. So this is a, about a 20, 21 volt panel, just like the rest of them. They're called 12 volt, but that's what they put out. So I know that this one's gonna be good to go. I've got some wires that come from the box on the back of it that already have the MC4 connections. In most cases, you're gonna use MC4 connections. You don't have to. Now you could use butt splice connectors that are rated for a 10 gauge wire 
and like I use the heat shrink ones, use those, and then maybe even put a heat shrink sleeve over it or wrap it with some good 3M electrical tape over it just to hedge your bets a little bit against moisture. But in most cases, you're gonna have these MC4 connectors. Now the MC4 connectors, that's just a proprietary connector that basically the whole industry uses in these types of applications. Zamp Solar has their own proprietary connections, but if you get a panel off of the web or at your local solar place it's probably going to have these mc4 connectors and they're just made to snap into place seal out moisture and to be able to hold up against sun and road oils over time dust just the elements that they're, that they're going to be exposed to so i've got the mc4 connectors i don't think these are going to be long enough to tap in so i may have to make some extension wires i don't want to because i'm a lazy guy but i kind of hope i do so i can show you the steps involved in that too so the first thing i need to do is put z brackets on this now you can use generic z brackets renergy makes z brackets i'll put a link in the note to some z brackets but you want to get your z brackets on and they're just shaped kind of like a z is why they call them that but you want to get your z brackets on nice and tight and then you want to put a uh, gasket in between the, the surface of the roof and where we're going to go through with our self-tapping screws. In my case, my gasket is going to be butyl tape. I would highly recommend butyl tape. I've never had a problem with it. And then I'm probably just going to come back over the footprint on these Z-brackets with some Dicor. And Dicor is a sealant that's rated for RVs. It's been used in the industry for years. And they basically have two kinds. They've got self-leveling which is another way of saying kind of watery where it kind of oozes and non-self leveling if you're going on a side where you don't want it to drip and run. So I'm going to probably want to use self leveling and uh, tap into the existing wires and we'll see if I end up having to make these extra ones. So let's start with the Z brackets. So very first step before I go to all the trouble of installing the Z brackets and getting it up there on the roof and tapping it into the existing system is I want to test it. It's a used panel. And I also want to make sure that the voltage adds up to what will fit for the, for the uh, pre-existing like we talked about. So I'm going to flip this over, put my voltmeter on it and see what it's putting out. And I'll show you how to do that. Pick yourself up a little voltmeter. If anytime you're doing solar or anything electrical on your van or bus or box truck or RV, you always need to have a, a multimeter handy, a voltmeter handy. And if you don't know how to use one, it's nothing to be intimidated by. It's pretty simple for the, mo for the most of the um, tests that we're going to do. And I'll show you how to do it. Ain't no thing. So we got to flip it over so it's in the sun. And then I'm going to put my, every meter starts different. Get yourself a decent meter. I'm gonna set it to volts. On this one, I'm gonna set it to volts. And then it's on AC, I'm gonna press it over to DC. Now it's on DC, if you can see that. It doesn't matter if I touch red to red or black to black because the voltage output is going to be the same. It's just going to register in reverse polarity. So you'll look for a little negative. If you've ever got your wires wrong on something, there'll be a negative in front of the voltage, but it'll be the right voltage. This, in this case, I'm going to do red to red. I just wanted you to know that. And I'm getting 20 volts, 20.33 volts. So I know this panel is good to go there's going to be pre-made holes for where it's set to go you don't have to follow those pre-made holes if the curve of your roof or there's something about the install makes it so you've got to move those z brackets around don't be shy about putting the z bracket someplace else you could put them on the ends if you wanted to anywhere that makes sense if there's a ridge where that Z-Brack is going to fall on that ridge and you want to move it over a little bit. They don't all have to be uniform, the same distance from the corner, if it makes sense to do it diff differently. The only thing I want to caution you about is if you're going to drill through this, get yourself a piece of plywood and stick it under it. So when you drill through, as gentle as you're trying to be, you don't push through and hit the back of that panel and bust it. So just a little piece of plywood. I do it all the time. I'm not going to be drilling holes. I've got enough surface area that I know that wherever I put that panel, it's going to fall in a place that the 
that the footprint and the Z brackets are going to make sense. So I'm just going to put them where there's already pre-made holes. I got this Renogy kit off of Amazon. I'll put a link down in the notes. If you get some really big panels, they make, yeah, come with Z brackets that are a little heavier than these. So you want to make sure you're using a, a bracket that's uh, rated for the weight. But these are good universal brackets and they'll fit on any panel uh, that I've ever used. And that's what I'm going to use right now. and it looks like I'm gonna have enough length. I'm gonna have to get down off the ladder and move the camera to get these other screws in. So I may as well just go ahead and tie these in while I'm here. So let's do that. It looks like I'm gonna be long enough, but I'll go ahead and show you how to make these uh, connections when I'm done with this. I'm gonna show you the before and after with the just one panel. I, now these panels need to be cleaned, I see that, but I'll show you what it was with the one panel and then I'll show you what it is with this additional panel, what kind of uh, output we've got coming off the roof to feed those Battleborn batteries after this. And then I'll show you the MC4 connector, how to do it and stuff. In case you need to do it, it's good to know. You're gonna need a special tool and it's a little bit tricky, but I'll show you. So let's do this. We don't get so lucky that we can just go male to female, female to male in every case. So I don't want it to look easier than it was. But in this case, it was that easy because I came up before I started shooting and traced the lines and saw that that's all I had to do. But you've got to make sure that you're going either parallel or series for what you want and that you're plugging it in the right way. We can't just plug it in any old way. In some cases, we might be grounding it out by plugging it in or you know, creating a dead short. So it's just something we want to look at. say that you didn't get as lucky as I did and you have to make some extension cables to get to where your plugs are on your pre-existing solar panels what you would need to do is get yourself some solar rated wire and I'll put links in the notes on on how to get that the solar rated wire is thicker and it's got a film on it to protect the uh, the wire against the elements and rain and the connections also you know are water sealed so you want to make sure you get the right cable and we don't have to be intimidated by the fact that this came with these ends already on it I'm going to show you how to make these ends right now and I'll put a link in the notes to all of the tools you'll need to do it strip the wire back 
That's about four or five millimeters. And then I'm gonna look at the plug that's on it. And if the plug that's on it is female, I've gotta make this one male. If you just got bare wire, the two ends have to be different. Get yourself some MC4 terminals off of the web. I'll put a link in the notes on where to get them. And the way these work, it's kind of tricky. You've got a male and a female, and they take inside crimps that are male and female, but they're opposite. So the female one gets the male crimp, and the male one gets the female crimp for it to work right. This one that I stripped back is female, so we're gonna make it male, which means I need a female crimp. So the, I want to put untwist the male terminal that's going on and go ahead and put it on now. And there's a rubber gasket in there that you have to finagle a little bit. So I'm going to take the female, put it on here. They make a tool specifically for this, MC4 crimpers. I'm gonna take the middle one, and I'm just gonna crimp that right down all the way. Now I take my tools, and I just tighten it the rest of the way. And there you have it, we've got professional MC4 terminals on these solar rated cables, 10 gauge, 10 gauge handles up to 30 amps. You wanna go really no less than that if you can help it because you never know when you're gonna be upgrading. And you're not really looking at a lot of expenses of, in tools. These MC4 terminals aren't very expensive. I'll put a link in the notes for those. And once you've got this crimper, you've always got it. And if you're out in this lifestyle, it's something that I come back to all the time. So with that, I hope this video helped you out. Don't be intimidated by this stuff. It's not that complicated. Get yourself right with your solar. And thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next upload.